This guy right here is the head of the British Army and he earns around 200k a year. But what do the rest of us peasants earn? Hey everyone and welcome to The Savvy Squaddy. In this video I will be showing the salaries of each rank within the British Army and talking about some other factors about our pay that you might not know. Before we get into the actual numbers though, I'm going to cover a few things to do with our pay. If you want to skip straight to the amounts then the time codes for that section is on the screen now. So firstly, how does the final British Army salary come to be? Well, it's made up of two things, base pay and X Factor. Base pay is made up of the core pay and the trade supplement pay. X Factor is then calculated from the base pay and both of these are pensionable. For more information on the pensions, check out my videos on the Armed Forces Pensions, links are in the description. But finish this video first. The call pay is based on rank and the increment level and it is the same across all trades within the army. So all newly promoted corporals across the British army are paid the same core amount. Where it then differs is due to the trade supplement pay which is an additional amount of pay which varies with rank and increment level but also job role. There are four levels with four being the highest. Essentially the more specialised your job is the higher the level you are and the more you get paid in comparison to your peers in other less specialised trades. You can see on screen now a bunch of job roles and their supplement levels. Naturally an Army Air Corps pilot is a lot more specialised than an ROC driver which is why they are on SUP4 and the driver is on SUP1. Not hating on drivers, I too am not specialised enough to be above SUP1. However, for some job roles there is something called bespoke pay spine which is an alternative to core pay and trade supplement pay. Job roles like vets, doctors, chaplains, MPGS, nurses, dentists and special forces would all come under this. This is because these don't fit the same pay model that applies to the rest of us. However, I won't be covering that in this video. So core pay and trade supplement pay make up your base pay. And then you also get X Factor added on, which is 14.5% of your base pay. The reason for X Factor is to compensate you for the different conditions in service life compared to the conditions in civilian life. And there are 12 components to it. It's not intended to compensate for specific circumstances that you might face at any one time. Rather, it reflects the broad balance of advantages and disadvantages averaged out across a whole career. Now you have an understanding of that, let's get into the numbers. I'll go through the workers first and then the officers. When you join the army, you begin basic training as a recruit and your initial pay is £16,844. This is your rate of pay for the next 26 weeks or until you finish phase 2 training, whichever comes first. You might not think that's a lot, but whilst in training, most people have minimum outgoings and you are also mostly confined to camp, so you won't be spending much. You'll be taking home around £1,000 a month after tax, food and accommodation are taken out. Now, as a young person just coming out of school, that can be quite a lot of money and it can go to their heads if they haven't been taught personal finance. In my opinion, use the time in training where you don't have much of a life outside the army to start creating healthy financial habits that will set you up for the future. As a quick example, if for the first six months you invested £600 a month into an investment ISA, and then never deposited any more money into it and just left it with an average annual return of 8% when it came to you retiring after 22 years that £3,600 would have turned into nearly £20,000 and it's tax free as it's in an ISA. So along with your EDP lump sum you would get from your pension you would also have this as well. Now imagine if you were able to do that for your whole career. I wonder what it would be then. Once you finish training you become a private which depending on who you join is also known as a sapper, trooper, rifleman, fusilier, gunner, craftsman and many more. They are all the same rank and they all begin on an annual salary of £21,452 a year which is around £1,500 a month after tax. Earlier I mentioned about increment levels. This is essentially a pay rise that will occur every year and there are a certain number of levels per rank. However, in almost all ranks, annual increment levels are the same for the first two years and this is because it is seen it will take two years for you to gain the experience required for that rank and have a full grasp of what is required. As you spend more years in the rank, your knowledge and experience increases, as does the increment level that you are on. Some roles do have a bar on these levels which can't be passed until certain criteria like career courses have been met. Also, your performance is directly linked with the increment pay levels as well. If you underperform by getting an overall performance grade of C or below on your annual report then you will not go up an increment pay level. It literally pays not to be a shit cunt. And then you also have the supplement levels which I went through earlier. When it comes to promotion it varies with job role and how good you are but it's usually between 3-4 to four years that you will be promoted to the next rank. So after private is Lance Corporal 
and they start on £28,351 a year, which is around £1,900 a month after tax. There are a number of job roles within the army where you come out of training as a lance corporal, but your training does tend to be a lot longer than everyone else. This can be the biggest pay jump you receive depending on how quickly you promote. It took me just over two years to get promoted to Lance Corporal and it was a very nice pay rise. As a Lance Corporal you are a junior leader and begin to take on more responsibilities and become responsible for a handful of privates that you work with. I'm not going to go through all the roles and responsibilities of each rank in this video. Essentially as you promote you have more responsibilities, are held to a higher standard and are more accountable for your actions and those of your team and become responsible for more and more people as you go up the ranks. This is why your pay increases with rank because you have more responsibilities, more experience, more knowledge and more is expected of you, all of which makes you more valuable. Let's be real, an Army Air Corps pilot is more valuable than an RLC driver. They add more value. Now that pilot wouldn't have fuel or ammo if it wasn't for that driver transporting it, but the driver is easily replaced, the pilot is not. Therefore he is more valuable and is paid more because of that. If you want to be paid more in life, then add more value. After a few years as a Lance Corporal, you will be promoted to Corporal. We start on £33,065 a year or around £2,200 a month after tax. Many say this is the best rank in the army as you are the most senior of the juniors because once you promote a sergeant, you become the most junior of the seniors. So once you've completed a few years in the best rank, you move on to being the bitch of the seniors mess, the sergeant. For your troubles, you would then be on around £37,198 a year or a take home pay of just over £2,400 a month. But some of that will have to go to paying a monthly subscription to the seniors mess and to buy a stupidly expensive mess dress that you wear a couple of times a year. Apparently though, it's the most exclusive club in the army. Clearly these individuals have never been to chess club on a sports afternoon. After a few years of having three stripes, you get a crown to go with it, making you a staff sergeant. You start on £41,872 a year, which is nearly £2,700 a month after tax. At this point in your career you spend all day behind a desk answering emails and sorting out admin or kit and equipment. It can come earlier in your career but that does depend on your job role. I mean clerks spend their whole careers behind a desk from day one. So if you don't want a desk job don't join the clerks. But eventually all job roles do lead to a desk. The next rank you will be looking at is a warrant officer class 2. The starting salary for that is £45,542 which is close to £2,900 a month after tax. If you get this far you've probably done around 18 years or so in the army. Fair play, you deserve more respect. And guess what, you get it. Now everyone below you has to brace up like an erect penis because nothing screams respect more than someone walking around stiffly with their arms pinned to their sides calling you sir or mom. You may even get to carry around a stick, but then that old age does creep up on you fast. Now if you made it this far in your career and still have some time left, you could promote to the final rank within the non-commissioned vein and that is Warrant Officer Class 1. Starting on a salary of £52,746, which is around £3,300 a month after the tax man has been. You are the most senior soldier within your unit and are often in a prime position to make positive change that will improve the morale of all other ranks. Or you'll just introduce some bullshit rules to make a power play. So those are the salaries of the non-commissioned ranks. Let's move on to the commissioned ranks, also known as officers. I'll go through this quicker as I'm not an officer so I don't know all the ins and outs of what they do, but broadly speaking they lead, manage and command their troops, write a lot of policy, get lost on the training area and plan a lot of stuff. For me, it was a route I thought of but decided against as it's not the lifestyle or career I wanted. Plus, have you seen CAV officers? Another f breed them lot. One thing to note with officer pay is that they do have increment levels but they do not have trade supplement pay. They get paid enough anyway. So if you join as an officer, you go to Sandhurst as an officer cadet for almost a year to do your training. Whilst there, you'll be on £28,861 a year or nearly two grand a month after tax. Once completed, you'll be promoted to a second lieutenant and join your unit where you will be earning around £34,960 a year or just under £2,300 a month after tax. A year later though, you'll promote to lieutenant and have a small bump up to £35,908, which is now just over £2,300 a month. You'll spend a few years at this rank and then you'll promote to captain. From the average time it takes for a private to get to Lance Corporal, an officer can go from second lieutenant to captain and begin to have an annual salary of £44,457 or just over £2,800 a month after tax. Reaching the rank of captain as an officer is pretty much a given providing you are not utterly f***ing useless. You can also commission from the ranks and if you are senior enough, usually staff sergeant and above, you will be promoted straight to captain and do a short course at Sandhurst. If you don't meet the seniority requirements then you'll have to do the whole of Sandhurst and come out as a second lieutenant. 
after captain comes major and this is a rank you usually have to work for and that starts at around £55,999 a year. You'll be taking home nearly £3,500 a month after tax. A major is usually an officer in command of a squadron or company which could have around 150 people in depending on the unit. Or if you're in army headquarters you and captains share the brew bitch duties. Once you've done that, next stop is a lieutenant colonel which means you are probably now the commanding officer of your regiment, responsible for everyone and everything within that unit. Your starting annual salary is £78,594 or nearly £4,500 a month after tax. After some time there you'll be promoted to colonel and with that extra pip comes a starting salary of £95,218 or nearly £5,300 a month. You are now a staff officer and the lowest rank of them but your job is now principal advisor to senior officers. Riveting stuff. Next up is a brigadier, which is also referred to as a one star. You would be on a starting salary of £113,470 a year or nearly six grand a month. Brigadiers are usually in command of a brigade and can be the guys that the grass is often painted green for. The remaining ranks are major general or a two star, lieutenant general, three star and a general, four star. And they have salaries of around 120k, 140k and up to 200k depending on job role respectively. The chief of the general staff who I mentioned at the start of the video is the rank of general on nearly 200k a year which after tax is just under 10k a month. Now it is actually possible for someone to join the army as a private soldier, make their way through the ranks, do a late commission and then work their way up to the position of CGS. You'd have to be a switched on bod and by f would your pension pot be huge but it is possible. So those are all the ranks within the British Army and the starting salaries that go with them. If you are watching this and looking to join, this might now help you decide what path to take depending on what you want from a career. Talking about pay in the military can be a very divisive subject. Across all ranks and all three services, less than half of people are satisfied with their pay. But why is that? In a previous video about how much I would have to earn on Civvy Street to live the same lifestyle I do now, I showed I would have to earn an extra 20k a year I even monged it and completely forgot to factor in the pension in that video as the armed forces pension is non-contributory and civvy pensions are not. Chances are highly unlikely of me leaving the army next year and walking straight into a job that pays over 55k a year. So it appears that actually we are paid well when the benefits and allowances of being in the armed forces are factored in when compared to a similar lifestyle on civvy street. But the question remains as to why satisfaction is still low. I think it is a number of factors which do include a lack of understanding and perspective but also many people believe and in some cases rightly so that their civilian counterparts earn more. I mean at 48% better opportunities outside the services is the second biggest reason for people wanting to leave and don't get me wrong I am a firm believer that you can make so much more money in Civvy Street. Remember you are paid in proportion to the value you bring to the marketplace. Add more value make more money. And working in the private sector, you have much more opportunities to negotiate for better pay and rises. If that's the case then, why don't people leave? Well, at 85%, job security is the biggest reason for people staying in. So, whilst there are opportunities out there on Civvy Street, people don't want to take the risk of leaving a secure job and income to potentially not be employed for a while. In my own circumstances, the amount of work, responsibilities, output, experience and knowledge that I have I could earn a lot more on Civvy Street, so then why don't I? In my trained profession it isn't something you just walk into. It requires a client base which takes time to build and I am working on that so it's ready for me when I leave. Also my field is very competitive. If you don't produce the goods you don't get paid or if a competitor is faster then they get paid and you don't. In the army I get paid regardless and that is one of the perks of being on a salary. I might get into a bit of trouble for not supplying the product on time but I am still able to feed my family and pay the bills at the end of the day. Also, because I am on a salary and get paid regardless, I am able to be much riskier with how I work. I can try new techniques and experiment with new methods without the fear of f***ing up and not getting paid. I can use this time to really hone my skills, perfect them and increase the value that I can add so I am then able to charge much more for my services in Civvy Street. I am using my time in the military strategically to increase the value that I can add whilst also attempting to set up multiple streams of revenue all while getting paid a guaranteed income. I may just be a number to the army but they are just a means of a secure income for me whilst I work towards something much bigger and better. Use your time in the military for personal development to increase your value. It's the best time and place to do it in my opinion. 
Like with any job, there are pros and cons, and it is important to look at and evaluate all angles before making any decisions that you might later regret. But what are your thoughts? Let me know in the comments below. Thank you all for watching. If you liked what you just saw, please hit the subscribe button up there. And if you want to see some more videos, click over there. See you soon.